Hi Gecko fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko. Let's play a guessing game. Let's see if you can guess what season we're in in Wisconsin. And how about now? Does this help? My wife really loves to decorate. Hold on just a second. That's better. Still need another clue? Let's take a look at this. How about now? I hope this is the last clue that you need. Yes, it's fall. It's Thanksgiving. It's a time of the year to get together with friends and family and go through the blessings that you've had in your life. For me and the geckos, it's a time to look at the geckos and start cooling them down for the winter. Yes, it's time to talk brumation. I want you to meet Ray. Ray is a leopard gecko that's been with us probably about nine or ten years now. It's a nice big healthy male and today we're going to be talking about brumation. But first, hold on just a second. Alexa, tell me the temperature for Thursday Thanksgiving. On Thursday, November 28th, expect a high of 35 degrees Fahrenheit. What do you think, Ray? Is that too cold for you? It's certainly too cold for me, that's for sure. So we're going to be talking about brumation today. And what is brumation? We probably are familiar with hibernation, especially in, in bears, where they go into a cave and they sleep the whole winter. Well, that's very similar to reptiles. So what does that mean to the reptiles? Well, it means as the temperatures drop, their body temperature drops as well. They become less active, their metabolism drops, and they're less hungry. They eat less during that time. I get a lot of questions at this time of the year from people asking why their geckos are eating less and are less active. That's exactly why. Most everybody's house cools down a little bit in the uh, fall and winter, especially ours. And as the temperatures cool down, their animals become less active. It's as simple as that. Should you be worried about that? Not at all. In fact, a lot of people will put a light on top of their enclosures or underneath to offer more heat to their geckos, especially crusty geckos. So today we're going to focus on geckos and we're going to talk specifically or more specifically about leopard geckos and crusty geckos. We're going to exclude some of the more exotic geckos. Some of the leaf tails from Africa really require a deep, deep cool down I think a lot of people put them in their freezer for the winter. Uh, that's, that's not entirely true. But today we're going to focus more on the geckos that are more generally kept. As well, this topic lends itself more to breeders than it does somebody keeping one or two animals. So let's talk about why you would want to brumate your animals. As you notice from the beginning of the video, it's cooling down here in Wisconsin quite a bit. Again, it's about 35 to 40 degrees outside, and it's starting to become uncomfortable for people. Again, animals go through this in nature as well. So what we want to do is replicate, as breeders specifically, we want to replicate nature as much as we possibly can. Why is that? Well, there are some proven benefits to cooling your animals during the winter, especially if you're a breeder. It's proven that cooling your animals during the winter, especially if you're breeding your animals, is a huge benefit to their reproductive cycles. Going through a brumation, cooling them down in the winter, and then warming them up in the spring triggers the hormones to aid in their breeding. One of the biggest questions that I get as a breeder is, should I brumate my animals or not? And my answer to that is simply, if you have one or two animals, you don't need to go through a brumation period. If your house cools down, the animals are going to naturally cool down themselves. Another situation where you don't want to cool down your animals is if you have young animals. You want them to continue to grow through that cycle, through the winter. You actually want to add heat to your enclosures to keep them growing if your temperatures get a little bit cool in the winter. Finally, another situation that you absolutely don't want to brumate your animals is if they're unhealthy whatsoever. If you have an unhealthy animal, do not go through a brumation with that animal. You want to keep them on a normal feeding program and keep try to get them as healthy as you possibly can. So how long is that brumation period? 
As I mentioned, I start looking at brumation around the November, end of November time frame. And I run until about the end of January, the beginning weeks of uh, February. So I'm looking at right around two months of time. You can certainly shorten that period of time to about a month or so. Just a period of time that indicates to the animals that they're going through this change of seasons where they cool down and then again warm up. In the Supreme Gecko facility, we're very fortunate that we have our animals in our basement. There's a big benefit to that in that it doesn't drastically cool down and it dra doesn't drastically warm up in the summer. In the winter, there's a natural cooling down period and that cooling down is around four to five degrees. And that's really nice for a lot of our animals. If I'm talking about leopard geckos though, I do go through a very specific brumation uh, process. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. For our crested geckos and our other animals, being in the basement is a huge benefit in that that temperature drop of five to six degrees is perfect for them to trigger a cooling down period. And then in the springtime when those temperatures rise again, it's a perfect trigger for them to start breeding. For our crested geckos during that period of time, I change our feeding cycle from every other day to maybe every third day. I really see a drastic decrease in their appetites. However, I don't change the misting schedule whatsoever. I'm misting those crusted geckos every day or every other day, especially in our house because it gets really super dry. For our leopard geckos, however, that's a different story. We have them in a separate room completely away from the other animals. During most of the year, that room's heated to about 75 to 76 degrees. And the heat tape that we run on the racks keeps the warm side of those enclosures around a temperature of the low 90s. For the two months that we're broom mating leopard geckos, that room's going to get down into the low 60 degrees. And that's with the heat tape turned off. Here's a really, really important fact. We don't just turn that heat down. We go through a cycle of three iterations of turning that heat lower. Again, it all starts around Thanksgiving where we take that first step and turn the temperatures down about four to five degrees for a period of about four to five days. And again, we're going through that process three times until we get the temperatures down into the low 60s. Here's another key fact. We'll do the same exact thing for our lighting. We'll turn it down three times until we're right at a period of uh, light for about seven to eight hours. So again, the first time that we're turning it down, we're decreasing the light in the morning for an hour and decreasing the light in the evening for about an hour. For four or five days, then we do the same. And then for another four or five days, then we'll do the same until we're at a period of time where they get light during the day for about seven to eight hours. This cycling process is so important. Number one, it's very similar to what happens in nature or as similar as we can get it to be. And number two, you want to get them off of their normal feeding process, where by the time you're actually in brumation, they're not eating anything whatsoever. So that first period, you're clearing their stomachs of all the food and getting them to a point where they don't have any foods in the, food in their stomach. Let me repeat that because it's very important. During brumation, we don't feed our animals whatsoever. Their metabolism is so slow that they really don't need food during that period of time. And I've gone through this many, many times, many, many years. And by the time that they're coming out of brumation, the interesting thing is that their tails will be thicker and they'll be healthy enough to start that increase in food consumption in preparation for breeding. So while they're going through this brumation period of time, they aren't eating whatsoever, we're not offering food, but we absolutely are offering clean water. It's super important that these animals stay hydrated during brumation. Again, think of in nature, they found a burrow, they're staying in that burrow, and that burrow is kind of damp and cooler, and they're absorbing through their skin and staying hydrated that way. It's the same way in captivity, we have to keep them hydrated during brumation. If you remember, I mentioned that our house gets super, super dry in the winter, and it's especially important, at least in my house, that I offer the water all the time to these geckos. And while we're offering the water, we're also making absolutely positively sure that their hides stay completely moist, not wet, but moist, 
so that they're staying hydrated as well that way. So you've gone through the two months of brumation and you're ready to bring them out and prepare them for breeding. In our facility, we do the absolute opposite of what we did in the fall. We start increasing the temperature and increasing the light cycle, the light period of time that they receive during the day in three different waves. So during that first wave where we start increasing the temperatures, we start offering food by about the second day or so. So by the time we've increased the temperatures and the light for that third time, we're feeding on a normal schedule of every other day and we're feeding big time at that period of time. We're absolutely making sure that all of their food dishes have calcium and other vitamins and minerals in them. And we make sure that they have plenty and plenty of food. We're actually offering different types of foods at that time, like waxworms. I normally don't feed waxworms, but during that time, I'll offer a couple as a treat to the, especially to the females, to get them that extra gram or two of weight on them before they start breeding. And this is true in our facility, but by the time we end in February, the animals are up to perfect health and they're ready to breed. So that talks a little bit about leopard geckos. Let me talk about crested geckos for just a moment. Again, we're very fortunate in our facility where those temperatures drop down just enough to stop all breeding whatsoever in the facility. In the non-leopard gecko room, those temperatures are in the mid-60s or so, and crested geckos are just done breeding. Actually, by this time of the year, I've seen a huge decrease in crested gecko uh, laying activity. So by now, you're asking the question, well, Wally, I don't have a facility where it naturally cools down. What do I do? And the simplest answer to that is get them as cool as you possibly can, especially if you're trying to breed your crusted geckos. If you have one or two animals as pets, it's not that necessary. So how do you cool them down? Take their enclosures, put them on the floor. If you have a basement, if you have somewhere where it's a little bit cooler, put them in that area. Make sure that you take off all the light and that will help decrease the temperature as well. And certainly during this period of time, keep misting. Like I said before, our temperatures in our facility cool down a little bit for the crusted geckos, so we offer food less frequently. You'll wanna do the same. Don't be upset if they're not finishing off all the food in their dishes, that's okay. I think it's especially important with crusted geckos to cool them down, especially if you're in a breeding situation, because simply, it's not really for the female's benefit, but it is a huge benefit to the females. It's a huge benefit to the males. If you think about it, if you have your males in with your females for the rest of the year, those males are constantly active with those females. You wanna separate them out so that by the springtime, those males are, are actually healthy and ready to, to start breeding again. If you don't have another enclosure for your, for your males, what you can do is uh, purchase one of those plastic storage containers, put some ventilation holes in there, and you can winter them in that enclosure, and that will work just fine. Make sure that you have it set up correctly with the right uh, decorations, with a food dish, with a water dish, and, and certainly mist again, and you should be fine. Again, these are generalizations about geckos, especially with leopards and cresteds. Your situation will vary according to your environment. But what you should do is if you have a specific gecko, you should really do the research and find out what the requirements for that gecko is. In wrapping this up, what I'd like to mention is that you don't have to go through a brumation period, especially if you have one or two pets, uh, geckos as pets. If you're breeding, you certainly want to uh, separate that male from the female during the winter time to give them both a rest. And it certainly is an advantage to going through a brumation period, especially to see some increased uh, breeding behavior in the springtime. Follow these guidelines and you should be all set. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave those questions in the comments below and I'll get to them just as soon as I possibly can. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and certainly hit the notification all so you don't miss another episode. Thank you for watching.